Blog Talk Radio. Hello out there, everybody. This is David Domzowski, founder of the Financial Bin and host of Financial Bin Radio. Before I introduce you to our guest tonight, let me remind you about Entrepreneur Intervention, Triumphs and Failures of Entrepreneurs. The book debuted in November 2011, and so far we've, we've received some great feedback regarding it. We're looking to get an entrepreneur intervention into colleges and universities as part of their curriculum, and we'll update you on that, on that status at a later date. To pick up your copy of Entrepreneur Intervention for just 99 cents on, a, on Apple's iBook store for your iPad, for your iPhone S, 4S, um, on, on Kindle, on Nook, and now on Sony Reader. That just came out uh, over the holiday. Happy New Year, by the way. And it's also available in paperback at Amazon and CreateSpace. Now go to financialbin.com, click on the book section at the very top next to the login button for more information. Now let me introduce you to our guest tonight. He's speaker, author, and trainer Jason Nast. Jason is a consultant with Invention Patent Product Development, and he helps people turn their everyday ideas into multi-million dollar products and services. Now please join us in welcoming Jason. Jason, welcome to the program. Hey, great to be here. Thank you so much, David. It's very exciting. No problem at all. I'm really excited to have you, and I, and I know once uh, everyone hears this podcast, they're going to be glad they listen to it. So uh, let's get right to it. Uh, first question, um, can you give us a brief background of what you were doing prior to your current career? Well, I, uh, I, I am one of those fortunate serial entrepreneurs. Um, I have a very supportive mother all my life growing up told me that I can do anything I want as long as I promise to be the best at it. So my career path has been a varied one, um, including uh, I've been a, a DJ at a, at a classic rock station in the, in the top 10, top 20 market uh, radio here in Phoenix, Arizona, which is where I'm at at the moment. Um, and I've done consulting, I've done training, a lot of technology. I worked with Microsoft for several years doing technology training and trained the trainer for them. But it was my uh, 10 years in the film industry doing uh, pretty much all the rock videos and, uh, and car commercials throughout the 80s that eventually led to where I am today. Um, and it was one thing in particular I used to do art link letters, craftmatic adjustable bed commercials at our studio. And uh and that put me in touch with the, the the infomercial business and the product development business. And uh years later that's now what I do for a living. So 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 Microsoft DJing film and <laughs> you know, well, you, you kind of run the run the gamut almost on uh on basically being a serial entrepreneur. Not only were you a serial entrepreneur and tried different all these uh, different companies, but all these different sectors and in- industries. But you know, what was it about product development? Why did you stick with that? What What about that business excites you? Well, it was about nine years ago that I was actually at a conference with uh, with Mark Victor Hansen as a consultant on marketing and and things like that, and we were helping uh, Mark and uh, Robert Allen write a new book that uh, was tentatively titled "The Last Minute Millionaire." when you absolutely need to make money fast. And uh, we were there for about five days. We were in a conference, about 50 of us were in a conference, and going through all kinds of processes. And um, later they invited us back to kind of test the book out on a, on a whole group of new entrepreneurs. And it was at that later conference that one of the entrepreneurs approached me and said, I think you can help me. And at that time, I wasn't involved in, um, in you know, TV infomercials or production or anything like that. And I told them, I said, no, you know, I, I really have no expertise in your area. I'm, I'm more of a rock video guy than I am anything else. And he said, I don't know why, but I truly believe you can help me. I said, okay, I'm looking to start a new business. Let's, uh, let's look at what you have. And he introduced a product to me that was uh, a rough shape. And it was literally two bar stool tops and a lazy Susan and a wooden trowel handle. And the vision he had is he wanted to make that the next hottest fitness product. Hmm. And uh, I took the product on for 90 days to just to learn everything I could. And, and 90 days later, we got a license for that product, fully developed the product, and that product later became what's now known as the Push Up Pro and has been knocked off by uh, eight different companies and hmm. is one of the top-selling push-up products out there. Oh my God, that 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 that's just amazing. I mean, just 
you know, it's something with just a simple concept and, and then it just takes off and then you have all these iterations of it. And it's, it, it's just amazing how such a simple idea can just kind of catch fire. Yeah, um, just one one version of that product has sold over forty million in retail sales so far. That is, that is oh wow, that, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that. That that's simply amazing. Um, so that's what excites that me. That's what really gets me yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You're not kidding. My God. Um, so so kind of so kind of taking that, I guess that's all. That's almost like your uh, the way you got initiated into into that sector. So so. Now, since then, how do you go about helping people reach their potential in, in, in these businesses and, and these product launches? What specifically? Well, a lot of, a lot of what we do today is uh, w- w- it's really interesting because we uh, develop relationships with people who have brilliant ideas that are um, underdeveloped or under-marketed. Um, and and our, our products range literally from people approaching us with things they've developed on a napkin, you know, sitting in a bar one night, all the way up to fully, completely developed products that just aren't selling very well, and they don't know why. And sure. we take them through an approach, a cycle that we developed, and we spent the past nine years developing these different systems that we have. Um, and the systems are, are very simple, straightforward, but it puts it through a process of, of monetizing each aspect of the product, um, one of the things that we like to call it, it's, it's, it's a pie chart, P-I chart. It's a, it's a plus and an increaser chart. We take a product and we basically look at it from every angle to see if there's anything we can add to it, subtract to it, uh, subtract from it, make it bigger, smaller, lighter, heavier. And we just look at different ways to develop that product to eventually come to a uh, what we can ultimately present as a as a retail product or as an infomercial product. Uh, that's, that's really interesting, and, and to kind of build off of that, so what are the makings of a million-dollar idea? What, maybe just give me three essentials that a, that a product must have to, to qualify and to really kind of uh, transcend all the others. Well, it, it just, to tell you that, and I'll, this is a very short, sweet, simple answer, and it's actually I'm, sure. I'm, I'm uh, paraphrasing uh, our business partner and friend. His name is A.J. Kubani. Um, he works with one of the largest infomercial companies. It's called Telebrands. They see stuff all the time on TV for them. And he'll tell it, he'll summarize that statement. The three essentials to making a good product for TV is that it has to be easily demonstrable. Okay. Uh, if it takes a lot of education to get the customer to understand what it is, it, it starts to it starts to not become a very good TV or even a retail product because the customer has to be educated beforehand. So very easily demonstrated. And the second essential piece of this is that it has to solve an everyday problem. Uh, I have products that are sitting on my shelf right now that solve a problem, but it doesn't solve a problem for enough people. Mm. And so it has to solve an everyday problem for, for everyday people. And then, ideally, the third essential piece of it is the price point. Your, your retail price point has to be somewhere in the fourteen ninety five to twenty nine ninety five range, with the ideal perfect scenario being a nineteen ninety five product. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so now something <laughs> fits that 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 three cri- those three criteria. And, and now, could you describe for the listeners maybe how you would market that product? You know, I guess let's let's use a three essential thing approach again, and say what three things do you focus on to make potential customers even interested before you know interested in what you're selling before you even go about it? Well, I think I think to uh, to answer that question, we really have to kind of back up a little bit. And, and earlier, you talked about how how I help people really kind of develop their products, and and sure. So I'm going to answer kind of both questions in a, in, a, in a new way here because one of the things we found that's essential to developing products and to marketing to the customer is is to first identify your customer. Before, before you start building any product, identify the customer that's going to utilize the product. Um, we hold a workshop once a year where we actually – come in with entrepreneurs who are looking to start new businesses. And what we do is we come with literally a clean sheet of paper. There is, we, we go in, we rent a fix. We, we put up clean sheets of paper all over the walls, the big, huge post-it notes, but they're like, you know, four feet long and, right. and they're all blank. 
and the very first post-it note, the very first uh, uh, whiteboard thing is written out, and it just describes the ideal customer. And once you've identified what, what your customer is and what they need, again, we're looking to solve the problem, so we, we look at what the customer is, who the customer is, what problems do they have, and then you can start to uh, develop your product. Then after your product is developed, because you've done such great job identifying your, your demographic, your sales demographic, it's now you can go back to that step and, and tweak your product to, to market directly to that customer. Okay, so it, yeah, that it, it, makes sense, yeah. It, I mean, it's a strange way to talk about it, but basically the beginning and the end always starts with the customer. You start with the customer right. in mind before you design your product, and then obviously when you're wrapping back around the market, it, the ideal solu- or end result is that that customer pulls out their wallet, puts the money down, and takes your product home. And so that's how we really work with uh, with people to develop their products is by identifying their target demographic, who's going to buy it, um, and an interesting story around that, if I can, real quick. Sure. Um, sure. That pu- the Push Up Pro, for example. Um, there's a lot of competition out there. Now, th- I'm going to give two contrasting competitions for the same similar type product. So we have the Push Up Pro on one hand, and we have the Perfect Push Up on the other. Perfect Push Up, its market to its demographic was all male, very strong, hard edge, cl- uh, quick cuts on the commercial. Uh, gray background. It was, it was very cutting edge, kind of rough, bang, bang stuff. And in, in, at the time, men didn't buy TV products. The Push Up Pro, even though it's a product that's designed for a male to use, the marketing on it was designed for a woman to buy it for her man. So the commercial design on that was all broad shoulders from the back you get to see the man's shoulders you got to you got to see his eyes you, it wasn't a lot of hard edge stuff it was actually pretty straightforward and we had both the male and female doing the exercise so again we started off with the idea we wanted to market two women on that commercial even though it was a male product so again starting off with your ideal demographic who's going to open up their wallet their credit card and buy your product is the first step in developing any product. You know, I, I, I like how you say it's it's basically beginning and ending with the customer in mind. Do, do you find that maybe with some of the entrepreneurs you encounter, small business owners you encounter, do you find that they don't always do that? Maybe they kind of um, they kind of go in their own direction almost sometimes, and then it's like, oh wait, let me backtrack and figure out who my market even is before I continue here. Yes, and and that's that's one of the things that's probably where we get a significant part of our business is that we have someone who literally has a, a brilliant idea, um, and it's it works, it's great, but they, there was not enough uh, demographic marketing uh, or demographic identification early on for customer target, so they have a product that works, but it doesn't fit for some reason. I, I'll give you an example that would be. A product that might be suited for a woman, but the handle is too big for them to comfortably pick up. Because a man is developing it, he might develop it for himself, even though a woman's going to ultimately buy it, or vice versa. Um, I have one product now that's, uh, I, I can't talk about the name of it, but we just had a, a two and a half hour meeting on the fact that this product is an ideal supplement for men, but the packaging is very soft and very feminine and it was because the gentleman who developed it his wife was the graphic designer did all of the graphics packaging for it and um so it came down to they have a great male product that's not marketed well to men and so if you start with the customer then you know that the customer ultimately will take your product but if you start designing things the way you think they should be done before you identify your customer you spend a lot of time in the back end trying to fix the little mistakes you made along the way. Right. Now, now that that totally makes sense. Um, uh, but to kind of transition a little bit here, and, and maybe maybe you build off a little bit of what you were talking about. Can you kind of tell us uh, about some of the people that have mentored you? What what are what are some things that you've learned? Um, you know, from your serially entre- entrepreneurial days that uh, <laughs> that have helped you in your business today. 
Well, I, you know, I am a uh, I'm a lifelong learner and a study. I, I love to learn from people, and and I think that um, it, it's not what you know; it's what you don't know that you don't know that really messes you up in life. And uh, my mentors, I have fortunately been able to surround myself with uh, with the top people in the world. Mark Victor Hansen and I worked together for uh, early on in our uh, my career uh, in this arena. Mark, of course, is well known for the Chicken Soup for the Soul uh, franchise, the book. Right. Uh, right. But it's more than the book because he and Jack Canfield, the the co-authors of that original series, um, have today one of the largest licensing brands that is ever in existence. And there is more things with Chicken Soup for the Soul on it than there are Coke products at one point, I know. I don't know about today. Um so I learned a lot about licensing from, from Mark Victor Hansen. I learned a lot about product development because I surround myself with people who are in that industry. Um, A.J. Kubani is another example. Uh, and he actually has three brothers that are in the industry. And, and uh, uh, Chuck Kubani, his brother, great friend of mine, we, we can literally call him up and ask questions if we get confused about something. Like, hey, you know, how would you tweak this? And he'll, he'd be happy to tell us because it's, uh, these guys are experts in their industry. And I would say that for entrepreneurs that like in, uh, listen to your show, one of the key things you can do is surround yourself with people who are successful in the industry that you want to be in. Um, I started in this industry nine years ago knowing nothing but the behind-the-scenes camera side of doing TV infomercials. Never was I involved in product development. And in 90 days, I spent those 90 days – basically surrounding myself with people, connecting with people who were in the industry and asking questions over and over and over and over again so that I could learn the industry and know how to present and know how to do what I need to do to get the product licensed. And um, that's the biggest suggestion I can say is mentors are everything. Find the right mentors and hang out with them. <laughs> did that answer your question? I hope it did. I think it did, absolutely. And and actually – uh, you know, you, you mentioned uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, and, and I know in our previous conversations that you, that you said you were working with uh, Kevin Harrington, who uh, many people uh, may recognize from ABC's uh, Shark Tank. And you know, so, yeah. so what kind of th- what two things have what are some of the things maybe you guys have collaborated on? And uh, you know, what what have you learned from him? Well, uh, Kevin is an amazing guy, uh, and and we've actually. Um, have not finalized any products together yet, but we have been working and we collaborated with him early on. Um, he's doing a, a, a program right now called Pitch Tank, uh, which is a training kind of a scenario for um, for entrepreneurs who have product ideas and don't know what to do to kind of take the next step. And early on, we developed a lot of training that we were working with Kevin and his team to uh, to create that whole pitch tank scenario, and uh, and so a lot of the training techniques and stuff that that we've developed are being used right now in that pitch tank program. Uh, we we don't Kevin and I don't have a product together, but we work on and we present products to Kevin. Kevin has one right now that there's a, that his team is looking at one of our products. Um, the really cool thing about Kevin Harrington is this is a guy. I would probably um I would probably line up as having the vision of the future of direct response marketing and and direct response is what we do. We it's not only TV, which is one place that we start, but there's direct response radio ads, there's direct response uh, mailers, you'd fly to, you know you'd send out to people's homes and they would respond to it. And Kevin has been in the direct response industry for so long that he really understands um, the business background, but he's not been in the business so long, uh, long enough, or he's been in such a, a business environment for so long that he understands growth and development. One of the key things, and Kevin and I were together in um, in September in Las Vegas, and we were talking about this. He had just purchased as seen on TV.com for five wow. million dollars. And it, he simply bought the website domain, which was had some some success in the past, uh, mainly because of the name. Right. 
but what he's done with that is now is partnered with and, and with all of us in the industry. So now he's actually, even though he has his own TV infomercial company called TV Goods, and he does product development, he now partners with our companies and sells our product through his websites. Oh, wow. So it's a way for him to really bridge all of the competition in the in the industry. Sure. And and he reaps the rewards from it. I think it's brilliant, and that was one of the it big is. topics of oh, conversation yeah. back in September. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's almost like a like a, a giant affiliate network almost. Uh, it, you know, it, he's controlling it. Mm-hmm. It is, and and that's because the, he's a visionary, and and uh, working with his uh, his actually with the as seen on TV dot com uh, CEO, and we had like I say it, it the the. The idea behind it is it truly is an everybody wins situation, but it lets sure. him build a brand, even though he doesn't own he owns the as seen on TV dot com brand, but another company owns the as seen on TV brand. So it's really a way to bridge those those different brands together, and 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 everybody can profit from. It. So it's it's a great uh, that's a great example of of true um, working with your competition and entrepreneurship right there. So. Uh, that's that's what it's all about. Um, Great visionary, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Jason, uh, what are some obstacles that you faced uh, in your business? Do you, do you recall that maybe the biggest challenge you faced? I, I do. As a matter of fact, uh, it's funny because this challenge happens quite often, and. Um, we sometimes have great products that are just brilliant, and they're 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 a uh, they're a great selling option, you know, great selling product. But for some reason, and now with the economy the way it is, there's it's a, a lot more careful selection process. Sometimes we have a product that does get licensed, it does get developed, it's it's ready to go, and it gets delayed. And those obstacles can be heartbreaking for an entrepreneur, an inventor, or even just an idea person who comes up with a great idea because they see their product come to fruition. They see the actual physical product. They they have boxes in their, their house, in their garage, and see it, and it's not on TV yet. And it, it's difficult because then you spend the next – because if you miss your cycle to get on at the right time, an example would be fitness products. Um, the target for fitness products is always going to be in the Christmas season, the, the holidays from September up through February. If you okay. miss that window, your product's probably not going to go back out again until the next September. So you've pretty much shelved it for a year then. Um, and we find that's, that's a frustrating thing uh, in, in this industry because it is the what's the latest, greatest thing. And if uh, – if you get a product that misses that window, you don't know if next year if it'll make it on or not, and so that's that's a bit frustrating. the The way to overcome that obstacle, though, we found, and like I say, it does happen a lot, but we found that if we pay, pay attention to the product and to the cycle, and we pay attention to our buyers, that we can time the product correctly, so that it's ready to hit the market when our buyers are ready to buy. And uh, and that's how we try to keep our cycles, uh, our, our product cycle, in sync with our buyers, so that we're we're not getting shelved and we're not getting delayed. You know, you know, Jason, the the, the product development market and the <clears throat> and the infomercial market, I think, is especially to aspiring entrepreneurs. It's it's, prob- it's kind of a, almost an enigma because there's not there's not a lot of I, don't, I would say good information out there about it. But it's always something that's really interesting. And if you can really get your your product out there and in front of everybody, it's you know, it's a remarkable thing. I mean, especially with uh, some of the, some of the products you were talking about. Uh, now, now to kind of wrap up here, uh, what is one piece of advice you'd like to pass on to Generation Y? Well, I I I, uh, I do events here in on the West Coast. I from I all over California, Nevada, and in in Arizona, and I go to high schools and I talk to high schoolers about their future. And the advice that I give them is don't stop dreaming about it because a lot of times um, the older we get, maybe the more edged we get, maybe the more jaded we get, and we stop, stop thinking about the dream. And in reality, 
um, anybody, and I mean anybody, can come up with a million-dollar idea. And when you come up with the million-dollar idea and you train yourself properly, you can come up with million-dollar ideas every day. And it's when you stop believing that you can that you, you just you just give up on it. So don't don't stop believing. Don't stop dreaming and, and don't stop because a million dollar idea is everything from a widget, a product, a service. Um, I work with people who have uh, information, valuable, tremendous amounts of information. They don't even know what they really know. I mean, they just talk about it. And I've worked with them to develop that into an information product that can be sold on TV and online and and – the brilliance of it is, and the feedback that they get from it, just teaches them that that their dream was alive all along. You just, you just kind of take it to the next step. So, Gen Wires out there, or anybody out there, from eight to eighty, if you have a dream, you have an idea, pursue it. There's a high likelihood that if you're thinking that there's, it fills a need. If it's if it's something that solves a problem, then there's a, a high likelihood that somebody else out there has that same problem, and you can help them fix it. And there's a, there's there's definitely money to be made, but there's also a lot of pride to have in knowing that you're helping solve other people's problems. Jason, well said, definitely well said. I, well, look, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. I know we, I know I kept you a little bit longer than uh, than I told you, but really, uh, interesting interesting information and some great advice. I really appreciate your time. Well, sir, I thank you very much, and uh, I, I I would like to say that. If there's anything that I can do to help you or your listeners in the future, um, you know, contact me. Let me know, and I would be happy to do that. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you have a good night, okay? Thank you, sir, and thank you very much for your time. Take care. All right, folks, that was that was Jason Nast. Jason is a consultant with in, Invention Patent Product Development, and he helps people turn their everyday ideas into multi-million dollar products and services. You can follow Jason on at Jason Nast on Twitter. And I want to remind you as we close out here that Entrepreneur Intervention is out, and you can get it for just 99 cents, less than a buck, on Apple's iBookstore, on Kindle, on Nook, and now on Sony Reader. Uh, it's also available for paperback on Amazon and CreateSpace. And please visit financialbin.com for your latest information for Generation Y, for budgeting, for wealth management, for education, college, uh, anything you need to know about entrepreneurship as well. I want to thank you for your time. My name is David Domzowski. I am signing off. Please join us next week. Uh, we will be hosting uh, Dana Severson from Ahuli and Danny Donahue, who is a freelance writer and voice talent. I thank you so much for your time. Good night.